This 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 is a totally old. <laughs> Welcome to JCCA's 200th Anniversary Gala. Please welcome JCCA Board President Louis Jaffe. Welcome, everyone. Please join me in giving another round of applause for the Young Forever Dance Team. That is not an easy act to follow, but the show must go on. I'm Lou Jaffe, president of JCCA's Board of Directors. This is a pivotal moment in the history of our organization. And I'm excited and grateful to be gathered here in person. <laughs> 2022 marks our 200th year anniversary of taking care of children in New York, children often in grave need. Though our programs and practices have evolved over the last 200 years, our core mission remains unchanged to repair the world child by child. We'll hear from some of our clients in a few minutes before we all raise our hands for the auction. Please, I urge you all to be generous tonight and get ready to bid. It's hard to capture 200 years and hundreds of thousands of lives in just a few minutes but we hope you enjoy this video highlighting the legacy of JCCA. Thank you for being a part of our ongoing story and have a great night. In April, 1822, a group of Jewish Americans gathered at Temple of Sharif, Israel Together, they founded New York City's first Jewish charitable organization, the Hebrew Benevolent Society, with the aim of providing relief to Jews who had nowhere else to turn for support. They built New York's first Jewish orphanage, the Hebrew Orphan Asylum, in 1860, housing 30 children. A grander building on 77th Street 
soon followed for 200 children. In 1878, the Hebrew Orphan Asylum moved uptown again to a grand facility on 136th Street, where City College is now for more than 1,700 children. But this is not just a history of that institution, for there were dozens of other organizations working with Jewish young people in New York. Each organization formed to fill a need, to provide compassionate care, to build community, and build up the bustling, vibrant New York City we know today. Through the vision and dedication of the leaders of these institutions, the services themselves evolved and changed. What we know as foster care today first developed to alleviate crowded in the 19th century. The Pleasantville Cottage School was established in 1912, 110 years ago, to provide the HOA's orphans a less institutional, more home-like environment in the country. Mental health care came next. The first psychiatric clinic at a child care facility was established at Pleasantville in 1925. As approaches and practices evolved, so did the makeup of the organizations themselves, merging in 1940, right before the war, to become Jewish Child Care Association, JCCA. More institutions joined after, including Edenwald, Jewish Youth Services of Brooklyn and Childville. JCCA was also growing from the inside with programs to help all children who needed support, no matter their backgrounds. Dozens of new programs launched to help children with developmental disabilities, to provide daycare for working parents, or to pilot the city's first programs to prevent foster care in the first place. In two centuries, JCCA and its predecessor organizations have helped countless children, young adults, and families build successful futures through safety and support. JCCA's legacy lives on, not only in the families who came through our doors, but in our staff, our leaders, our volunteers, and supporters all fulfilling a promise to repair the world child by child. Please welcome JCCA Chief Executive Officer, Ronald Richter. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Ronald Richter, uh, and I'm proud to be JCCA's CEO and Executive Director, uh, especially as we celebrate our 200th anniversary. I, I stand on the shoulders of prior remarkable JCCA leaders, such as Daniel Jackson, the first president, and Mordechai Noah, who helmed the organization in the, in the 1840s, the 1840s. Noah was sheriff of New York, American consul to Tangiers, a pioneer in setting up a Jewish state in Palestine, and then the publisher of the New York Enquirer. Imagine that. I will always have the pandemic. <laughs> Before we continue our celebration, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge our deep concern for the families in Uvalde, Texas. Uvalde is a majority Latinx small town of 15,000 people where the median income is $28,000 a year. Prior to yesterday, the town was mostly known for producing honey. Those who perished were teachers and our most precious national resource, children. JCCA's reason for being, our raison d'etre. As a nation, tragedies like the one in Uvalde have become part of our way of life. 
When this kind of violence can almost seem normal, we know that something is broken in our world and we are called yet again to work to repair it. JCCA's commitment to repair the world child by child could not be more on point today than ever in its 200 years. Thank you all for joining us as we celebrate two centuries and set the stage for the next century to come. With us, we have some truly special people here tonight that I need to mention, I want to mention, I'm honored to mention. JCCA's government partners who have been with us, not those who are here tonight, but who have been with us for, uh, for really over a hundred years are essential to the work we do. And, and I'm gonna acknowledge the following officials who are here with us this evening. From the federal level, we have Aisha Schomburg, Associate Commissioner at the Children's Bureau of the United States Administration on Children, Youth, and Families. From our New York State government, I want to recognize Elizabeth Fine, Counsel to Governor Hochul, as well as two of our incredibly committed assembly members, the Honorable Thomas Abenanti, who chairs the Committee on People with Disabilities, and the extraordinary Andrew Hevesy, who chairs the Committee on Children and Families. And at the city level, please join me in welcoming shortly our mayor, Eric Adams. And Deputy Mayor, Ann Williams Isom. New York City Commissioner of Human Resources, Gary Jenkins, the Human Resources Administration. The Commissioner of the New York City Administration for Children's Services, Jess Danhauser. And New York City Council members, Rafael Salamanca and Rita Joseph. We are also joined by Deputy Brooklyn Borough President, Diana Richardson. Finally, but last and absolutely not least, we are joined by the Commissioner of the Westchester County Department of Community Mental Health, Michael Ort. And our local police chief in Mount Pleasant, who is an amazing partner, Chief Paul Oliva. I also want to recognize our generous event sponsors at the platinum and gold levels. Leonard and Sue Feinstein, Barbara Salmonson, Diane and Arthur Abbey, Stanley Barche, Bloomberg Philanthropies, City, Wendy and Scott Kleinman, Andrew and Jerry Summers, and finally Michael and Dale Katz. Finally, a special thanks to our century-long partner, UJA Federation of New York. Thank you, UJA, for recognizing the vital and urgent work that we do. It's only because of supporters like you that an organization like ours can survive and thrive for 200 years. Finally, it is really my honor and my pleasure to acknowledge the extraordinary JCCA trustees who have helped guide me and us in everything we do, and who have helped make this event as gorgeous and successful as it is. <laughs> Speaking of success, our next chapter is one of the shining examples of what can happen when a child, with the odds seemingly stacked against him, is given the chance to develop their gifts and truly fulfill their potential. Ed Hajim is an alumnus of the Hebrew National Orphan Home with a remarkable life trajectory. After graduating from the University of Rochester and a stint in the Navy, he attended Harvard Business School where he found his true calling in the field of finance. So he began 
an astonishing 50-year career that, during which he led a number of major investment firms and, no less importantly, found joy and fulfillment in the formation of his own family. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a real honor for me to introduce Ed Hajim. a surprise for me. I mean, uh, I didn't think I'd be on the ballot. I thought I'd make a few odd comments, but now that I'm up here, I guess I'll do a little bit of talking. Uh, that's New York for talking, you know, for talking school. Uh, I, uh, I did graduate from uh, the Israel Orphan Asylum and the Hebrew National Orphan. But before I start that, I want to thank the JCCA for inviting me to this unbelievable experience. I appreciate that. I also want to thank the JCCA for buying my book. I'm very humbled by people who buy my book because I found that there are four million books produced per year. So if you do read it, you have my thanks. And if you do read it and you like it, go to Amazon and give me a little rating and, and a review because my publisher loves that. I used to be embarrassed about recommending it, but it, I've gotten such positive feedback over the last 12 months that it seems to be an easy read and it's a story which is very simple messages. One is that anything is possible in this wonderful country. The second thing is that education is truly the solution to everything or almost everything. And finally, you know, don't be a victim. And you'll find other subtle kind of messages in the book, things like, you know, if you want to take a vacation where your kids can't get away, take a boat in the Caribbean, because at night they can't go anyplace. <laughs> there are little indications in there, and besides, you know, I did find happiness in in my Barbara, I love her more than yesterday and less than tomorrow. And sometimes you skip a couple days, but you know, usually it's. Uh, but uh, I've been married for 56 years. I have three wonderful children, eight grandchildren, but unfortunately seven boys, which didn't make my wife very happy. I, I, I guess what I want to talk about is, you know, what happened. Uh, you know, I, I have had a very lucky and very successful life. Uh, it, the book is, the second line of the book is from the orphanage to the boardroom. And I traveled to many boardrooms. My last boardroom was the University of Rochester, where I was the chairman of the Board of Trustees. And I was able to give the largest gift in the school's history. So that sort of tells the story of, you know, getting it all done. <laughs> the university did quite a bit for me. Let me flash back only 75 years. Can you handle that one? 75 years. There was a skinny kid, he weighed about mm, 75 pounds, he was 11 years old, and uh, he was told by his father, who was at sea, his father was a merchant marine, he said, uh, Mrs. Bernstein can't take care of you anymore, go to the Israel Orphan Asylum, 254 Beach Canal Drive, Far Rockaway. So he got on, the, got on the Long Island Railroad, and he arrived at the Israel Orphan Asylum. And May Hartman was there to welcome him, and he took him into, a, into the dining room, and he introduced him to all the kids there. This kid had just changed. He had a, his own room in a hotel in Coney Island with his own bathroom. He had now gone to this real orphan asylum where there were 50 kids in one room, and the bathroom was 10 sinks, 10 toilets, and 10 shower heads. So he was really trading it in. Anyway, Mrs. Hartman said to the crowd, this is Eddie. He reads, which was the first lie because I, I was somewhat dyslectic. I was a very slow reader. <laughs> anyway. There was, there was a rites of passage at this orphanage, and lucky for Ed Hager, or little Eddie as they called him, there was a fellow named Rick Saffron there, who was a year older, and he took him under his wing, and he taught him about the rites of passage, and sure enough, over a three-year period, Eddie progressed. In fact, at PS 104, he was captain of the guards and president of his class and so forth. Rick uh, aged out of, the, out of the orphanage and went to another orphanage, and I lost my good friend, and then Ed, aged out of that orphanage, but at that point in time, my father disappeared for about the third time. And I love my father, by the way. That's very important. But I aged out of that orphanage, and I became a ward of the state. When you became a ward of the state in those days, you could, they could send you any place, reform schools and all kinds of things. But some wonderful social worker found the right place for me, which was the Hebrew National Orphan Home in Yonkers, New York. And guess what? Rick was there again. And the, right, the rites of passage at that time was much more difficult. This was 50 or 100 boys 
and some of them weren't of the best character. And Rick then taught me that when you get pushed, push back, because they had to let people know that if they were going to bully you, they were going to get hurt. You may lose the battle. And Rick taught me the way. And Rick was my friend all the way through high school, at Roosevelt High School, and he left a year earlier. And Rick didn't go right to college, but waited a year, ended up going to, to college, and then into the military. I graduated at the University of Roche, you know, the Roosevelt High School, got an NROTC degree as it went to University of Rochester, did well, went into the Navy, and reconnected with Rick after we both finished our military service, and we went to different directions. I went to Wall Street to seek my fortune, been 50 years there, was very lucky, kind of hit a lot of places very well, caught a couple of waves. Rick did a different thing. He decided to really pursue his passion, which was to teach children to be on the side of young people and help them. And he went into teaching. He taught school in, in the, probably the worst place ever called New York City. <laughs> he was a teacher, he was a department head, he was a vice principal, and he was a principal. Yeah, he was in the knife fights, he saw gunfire, he saw all that during his 50 year career on the streets of New York. He was also one of the founders of something called City in a School, where he taught kids that basically there were jobs that they could have while they were in high school, and if they did a good job in high school, they could have those jobs after he left school. And guess what happened? That program, City in School, proliferated around the city of New York, then all over the country, and in a number of foreign countries. And Rick was one of the founders. Simultaneously, he got mixed up in the JCCA. And he started something called the Ruben Kafta Scholarship. And he, he hit me up right away. And that's why I'm so embarrassed tonight, because I basically, when I left high school, I buried my background. I didn't want anybody to know. I didn't want any sympathy. I didn't want anybody to know that I was going to be coming from an orphanage or that I was in a foster home. So when Rick called me, and he was relentless, as he was in raising all the money, and he wasn't a fundraiser by nature. This was something new to him. And I gave him a small contribution, but it had to be anonymous. You couldn't tell anybody that I was from the home. And we got the scholarship done, and, and with the human cough off scholarship, you know a lot of people got scholarships, and he took care of a lot of kids. And then he did something even more important. He built a newsletter for all the alumnus, and he recognized and basically talked to people about what happened to kids from the orphanage. It was a, a great magazine. Unfortunately, when the obituaries got longer than the recognition, he decided to close it recently. Rick, thank you very much. I think Rick is one of the true heroes of the JCCA. And he's here tonight, 80, 87 years young. And, and no matter what his condition was, no matter what his con No matter what his condition was, whenever I called him throughout my entire life, he never talked about himself. How are you? How's Barbara? How are the kids? He was one of these really great people. I mean, I just think that's one thing that saved my life. Rick, thank you very much, and I'm glad I had this opportunity. Uh, I think, right, and then, then basically, when he finished the alumnus, he's, he's basically got it all done, and he decided to step down. He sort of stepped away in the last few years. But he's always been a big proponent of the JCCA, and I'm embarrassed, although I made a small contribution to it, that I have not been. I chose a different path, and basically, I've, I've been very much in, or, in, involved in helping children. I'm a member of a, a Wiley organization, in Boston, which has 72 kids from foster homes. I'm involved in Northeastern University. I'm a big proponent of scholarships and so forth, but I have not helped the JCCA, and maybe tonight's the start. And thank you so much. So thank you so much, Ed, uh, and thank you, Rick, uh, and that's really inspiring. Um, as Ed re Ed's remarks show, uh, better than any I could certainly conjure, 
having a friend or mentor, someone to lean on or look up to at the decisive moments in our lives can make a tremendous difference. With that in mind, I'd like to take the next couple of minutes to spotlight our staff, the way they show up day, you can clap for our staff. The way that they show up day in and day out for our kids with energy, compassion, expertise, and full-hearted commitment. This was never more on display than during the pandemic, when our staff went above and beyond in countless ways to adapt to an ever-changing situation and to set our kids up to thrive in spite of it. Will all the JCCA professionals please rise so that we can collectively thank them for their dedication to our young people and families. Thank you. Thank you all. Tonight, young adults from JCCA programs will share a few words about JCCA staff members. Our kids are going to pay tribute to individual staff members who for them have gone above and beyond. Our first speakers are Ariana Gonzalez and Odyssey Jones Diggs. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ariana, Ariana Gonzalez, and I just want to talk about Nurshereen. Nurshereen is the most loving person we've ever had on this campus. She helps us with whatever we need. Even when she's busy, she'll, she finds time for us. Nurshereen is a nice person and and is always respectful to me and my fellow peers. She, she never forgets to say good morning, hi, and asks us how are we doing. She is the most kind and caring person I know. I love Nurshereen for what she has done for me and the kids on campus. She is a great nurse and a great person. Thank you, Ms. Nurse Shereen. I love you and I respect you. This is so many people. <laughs> oh my. my name is Odyssey Jones Diggs, and I just want to say I'm honored to be here. Um, I just want to talk about somebody very special at JCCA campus, and that person is Nurse Shereen. <laughs> is very special to me because when I first came to JCCA, I did not like any nurses, not because they did anything wrong to me or said anything wrong. It was just me having my guard up, being a new person at JCCA. But every morning, Nurse Shereen would come in, ask me how I'm doing, but ask me how do I like JCCA. Last year, I had COVID and I always told myself, I'm not gonna make it, I'm not gonna make it, I'm not gonna make it. And Nurse Shereen was there and said, you're going to make it. And obviously I'm here. Um, I really do love Miss Shereen because she's, like when you talk to her, it's not like she's avoiding you or pushing you away or trying to rush you to talk to you. She has all the time in the world, and I appreciate her. I love you, Miss Shereen.
So, good evening. This is, uh, uh, good evening. My name is Demetrius, and I'm here to shine a light on somebody who really supported me throughout my whole time, me and JCC, which is Kevin Young. <laughs> Without Kevin, I'm not sure I would have graduated high school. Kevin still taught me the whole way and made sure I got there. When I got my diploma, I cried tears to joy. Now I plan to go to college, study engineering and music. <laughs> Thanks to Kevin, I'm working right now. Before Kevin, I did not know how to apply for jobs or how to do interviews. Now I have these skills and money in my account. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Kevin, you are more than just my coach. You are like a father figure to me. If I'm stuck in a problem, you make your business and make me feel okay. Because of you, I know that I have support. I know that I can depend on people. It means a lot to me to take the opportunity to say thank you, Kevin. Trans man, I attend. <laughs> I attend um, Liberation out in Coney Island, and that school is by far one of the best schools I've ever attended in my life. Um, I would like to thank my counselors, all of them, and Mr. Mike especially because he's my personal counselor. Um, <laughs> Mr. Mike helped me out coming out to my mother, and it, I was really scared to come out. Um, if it wasn't for the counselors here at JCCA, I would still be trying to find the right crowd to hang out with. In my life, I used to be afraid of disappointing the people around me. But at Liberation, they let you know that being who you are is something you should never be afraid of. <laughs> and it's because no one can be a better you other than yourself. When I was at my lowest, Mr. Mike, he helped me, you know, he helped me come out to my mom. And I thought she didn't accept me, but Mr. Mike, he helped me understand that parents may need time to let something in. He told me to use my own strengths to let her know how I felt, so I wrote her a letter. He gave me feedback on how to share it with her, and it was amazing. I was surprised when my mother said she accepted me. She just didn't know how to approach the situation. Once I understood that my mom accepted me, uh, I felt more relaxed with the people around me at school and at home. Um, I was more comfortable with helping other students at the school as well. I feel like JCCA is a safe haven for us students. The counselors never stop supporting us in life, in school, and our career. They want to make sure that all of the students succeed. And because of them, I know my future is very bright and I have an amazing support system with me every step of the way. I have a lot of opportunities and I'm looking forward to exploring every one of them. I just want to say thank you guys so much. And I love you guys so much. <laughs> Thank 
Can we get one more round of applause for our youth speakers tonight? Odyssey, you did it. It takes a lot of courage to come up here in front of all these people. So there's a common theme, and I think you've heard it, and I'll point it out very briefly, but children grow up innocent, and they face severe harm. And we're here tonight to help right some of those wrongs. And one of the things that I heard in all those speakers were, in terms of repairing their worlds was that they were able to form bonds with, with adults once again, with coaches, with teachers, Coach Kevin, um, Nurse Shireen, and, and other, yeah. And, and other adults that became advocates for them, that protected them, that did the right thing and took care of them. So what we're trying to do in 200 years, bicentennial, right, comes down to one moment. We are trying to support this advocacy so that kids can grow up and have bonds and have educations and be independent again and have the, the nurturing and the trust and the love and the safety to do that. So in the next five minutes, we're going to ask you, on your table is a donation card. Would you grab that? And there's a round of pens. And there's also a, a nice little QR code, which you can, which you can photograph uh, or take a movie of and it becomes real. In the next five minutes, we're going to do what people have done for years, which is support this amazing, incredible organization so that they can continue to do the work of Tikin Olam, right? I said it wrong. Shalom. <laughs> Tikkun Olam. Sorry. <laughs> Tikkun Olam. Shalom is a youth advocate. He, he's been through JCCA, and he's come back, and he's now nurturing and taking care of, of youth himself. He's a great, incredible example of what the organization does. But, right, if we can leave the world a little bit better place than, than we found it. So in the next five minutes, we're going to do a reverse auction. We start at a high level. We work our way down. Uh, it goes quick, but we're looking for you to raise your hand. Raise your hand and, and, and show the room, inspire the room with your gift, and we'll see how much money we can raise. Let's raise a couple hundred thousand dollars. It's 200 years, right? I think we can do that. Um, so let's go. Our, our top level of giving tonight is going to be $20,000. And we're looking for exemplary generosity. Of some, is that a hand, madam? or are you just waving? That was a very dangerous move. Don't order wine at this moment. Thank you very much on the right for your generosity. That's $20,000 raised. That's one. Two. Thank you very much. Is that Ed? Thank you very much, Ed and Rick. Congratulations to your bond. It's very beautiful. $40,000 raised in about 30 seconds. Who else can raise a hand here at the $20,000 level to kick us off? This level can help out a lot if you can do it with college coordinators. We have one college coordinator serving over 200 students going to school. We need to expand that reach. If you can raise a hand now, that'll help. And there's other things on the screen. Thank you, sir, for your generosity. That's three hands and $60,000 raised right there. It's going to help with supporting students, admissions, counselors, uh, teachers, everything on that path to independence. And I think uh, Ed spoke so highly of education as being the solution to almost everything. Anybody else want to raise a hand here? We had one, two, three, right? $60,000. Anyone else care to raise at our top level of giving? I was given a notice right before I walked up here that we have an anonymous donor uh, who couldn't be with us this evening. And so that's another $20,000, $80,000 raised. Round of applause for all those gifts. And I'll give it one more beat just in case. Did anyone else want to raise right here? That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we'll go down. Next level of giving is $10,000. You see what it does up on the screen? How many hands can we get here? We're at $80,000 raised right now. How many hands can we see at $10,000? Thank you, sir, on my right for your generosity. Don't forget to fill out your donation card or go ahead and click on that QR code. Who's going to put us up to $100,000? Right here. Put your hand in the air like you just don't care. <laughs> It'll feel good. It feels so good to give. We're at $90,000 raised. $10,000 um, I'll give you an example. This supports, again, education, academic needs, the whole person, emotional, social, personal, all that happens. Seven, you mentioned high school, right? 
high school helps. And uh, I love this school name, Liberation Diploma High School, you know? <laughs> the name means what it says. Like, get your diploma and you're out. You're free. Who else can raise? We, there's got to be one more right here. Who can do 10000 Put us up to 100000 right here. Yes, madam. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you. Thank you. We're halfway. We're halfway. Or we're all the way. I don't know. I just said 200000 because it was the bicentennial. Um, anyone else at, at $10,000 before we move along? Can we get a round of applause for those two generous gifts? Thank you. <laughs> Moving down, $5,000 specifically helps access to critical therapy, and mental health is so important right now. Thank you very much, sir. Front row, front and center. Thank you, madam. Right there, we're up to $110,000 raised. Thank you, madam, as well. That's $115,000. And thank you, that's $120,000. A lot of love, right? A lot of love. Thank you. $120,000 raised. Who else? would like to raise a hand at $5,000. If you prefer to be discreet, the QR code is the way to go. That's what it's there for. He wants more money. Who else can do $5,000? I'm with him. Thank you, madam. Sir, would you come up and help? Thank you, madam. That's one thirty. This You just raised us $10,000 with that more money. I want more money. That's great. Why did I think? That's good. He wants more money, too. We're at 130000 and we got cheering section, front and center. Anybody else at $5,000 before we move along? Man, congratulations. Thank you so much. Round of applause for that. We're at 130 raised. Let's do a couple more levels. $2,500. I like this level. Foster care. Thank you very much, madam, for your generosity. 132 and a half raised. Who else at two and a half? Thank you, madam, for your generosity. We're up to 135. I'm playing the human calculator. Who else can do two and a half? This is a very attainable level and a much better investment than the market, in my opinion. We're at $135,000 raised. Do we have a couple more at two and a half? Foster care placement with stable and loving adults here in New York for people in need. That's repairing a bond right there. We had one foster mom. Thank you for your generosity. That's 137 and a half over there. Uh, quick one-line anecdote. We had one foster mom who was just honored by the American Cancer Society. She took in two children with severe lung uh, disorders, and lung disease, and she's honored by the ACS. That's the kind of passion and commitment that we're seeing from foster care patients. Is there any more at 2,500? Can you do that? Thank you, sir, for your generosity. That's 140,000 raised. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Another one? Thank you. 142 and a half. Thank you, sir. 142 and a half. Anybody else? Or we'll move along. Thank you all so much, so much for your gifts. One more round of applause for all those gifts. Two more levels. Dinner is on its way. Uh, next level of giving is $1,000. Supports so many things you see on the screen. How many hands can we get here at $1,000? There's one. There's two. Thank you. There's three over there. Four, thank you, sir. Five, madam, thank you, thank you, thank you. Six and seven, that's 150, eight, 150, 1,950, two and a half thousand there. Thank you so much. Another one over there, madam, thank you. And another one over there. Wow, 154. 154. 155 and a half, thank you, madam, at $1,000. Let me just say uh, some of the things this can help. Mental health is so big, but also... Therapy, laptops, telehealth, groceries, rent, electric bills, all building trust, giving and, and helping and supporting um, the whole individual. Anybody else at $1,000? Thank you, sir, for your generosity. I think it's one fifty-six and a half thousand. If I start to lose track. Anybody else want to raise at $1,000? We'll move along. Again, keep your hand in the air if you need help. Volunteers will come over and, and help you or the QR code or that donation card in the table. We're doing it old-fashioned. Okay, one more level. Uh, our real goal tonight is 100% participation. If you didn't get a chance to give, $500. This supports normalcy and joy for kids, right? So many of the good things in life. Camp trips, uh, water parks, dance team, music lessons, theater. How many can we see? I'll just count them out. There's one. Thank you, Don. Two. Thank you, sir. Three right there. Thank you. That's three. Four. Sir, I got you right there. I saw one over there. Five. Thank you, madam, as well. Six, seven over there. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Eight, 
Nine, thank you. Is there one more on $500? I can't see in the dark. There it is, 10, thank you. Another $5,170 and a half thousand dollars raised. Anybody else at 500? We got more coming? You know, I'm sure everyone wants to give. Thank you, madam, right there. Thank you. 175 and a half. About 170. So look, if we can raise $25,000 more than throughout the night, I'll stop. I'll just stop. Um, but uh, yeah, give a donation wherever you can. Everything counts. If you wanted to give more than 20000 or less than 500 $250, $100, our goal is 100% participation, so anything you can do, take a moment sometime tonight, give a little bit, and I know we'll hit 200,000. Uh, can I get a round of applause again for our youth speakers? Thank you all. Please welcome JCCA Chair of the Board, Barbara Salmonson. Hi, thank you all. Thank you for being here with us tonight, and a special thank you for all of, you who, all of you who participated in the auction. It's so important to us and to all our kids. It's so remarkable to look out at all the faces in this room. Your presence and support means so much to JCCA and our children, so thank you very much. <laughs> now it's time to turn our attention to the future, our next century of service. In this anniversary year, we're launching our capital campaign to revitalize the campus for 200 years to come, or at least 100. We're hoping to secure $35 million in funds, both from the government and philanthropy, to support a third century of care for our most vulnerable children. After you watch this next video, I hope you'll join us at this pivotal moment in our enduring legacy of care, support, and love as we continue to repair the world child by child. Thank you so much for being here. No child should ever wonder whether someone is out there rooting for them and believes in their capacity. Every kid here on this campus has a future. And it's JCCA that's gonna make sure that we invest the intellectual capacity and the capital capacity to help those kids fly. I'm so committed to launching this capital campaign and seeing it to fruition, making sure the kids have a health and wellness center new and updated cottages, and a place that they can really feel good about themselves. It's a significant time uh, to do this. Uh, one, it anchors our uh, 200th year of existence. So the question would be, why not? This is an appropriate time to make changes. Uh, in terms of the climate that we've been seeing, the, the type of children that are coming in, uh, the need that currently exists uh, due to the type of children that are coming in, we've had to pivot. Um, we've pivoted. For the last 200 years, where we've seen doors being shuttered on some of our sister organizations, we've maintained um, and, and stayed relevant. This is an historical organization that will be here in 100 years. And the reason for that is because we are determined to ensure that every child here has a future. Uh, I've been on the campus over the years. Uh, it basically hasn't changed a lot over the years. It's certainly uh, in need of uh, renovations and refreshments. When I was on campus, I went to Cottage 19, where I lived for four years. Uh, and the shocking thing was uh, there was a lot of difference between now and 70 years ago when I was there. Uh, the rooms were basically the same. Uh, it was not what should be in today's environment. We should be doing everything we can to be helpful to the young people. Not only is it an investment to uh, the youth, but it's also an investment for staff. Our staff, as you all know, uh, work all day, all hours in the residence, right, in the cottages. 
JCCA is one of the few places that treats kids with acute trauma as well as special developmental needs. It is amazing to be able to help create a health and wellness center, update their cottages and make sure everything is modern and what they need to make sure that they are comfortable and thriving in this community. Our wellness center would not just be a standalone medical infirmary. There will be space for workshops. There will be spaces for conferences. We are looking at our, our wellness center encompassing all of well-being as opposed to just medical necessity. JCCA has a 200-year legacy that I am so proud to be a part of. It is amazing that they have been helping children for 200 years and continue to do that, and there's still such a need. And so this 200th anniversary is an opportunity for JCCA to really once again innovate and be at the top of our game in terms of the quality of services that we can provide to the most vulnerable children in New York. Please enjoy your dinner. <laughs>